We live in a country in which the president, on his own initiative, can send the entire nation into war. They tell us that this is necessary to keep us safe. Oh? Who keeps us safe from them? You see, when 9-11 came along, they said, Oh, the terrorists just hate us for our freedom and values. Oh, this is all just necessary. It's going to be temporary. Don't worry. There's only going to be exercise against foreigners. Oh, yes, it may last a few generations, but that's temporary. Did they seek a constitutional amendment to change the system that revolutionized the legal order? Nope. They just decreed that this was the new way of things in this country. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We, uh, we hope everyone enjoyed our last couple of live streams with Jacob. But uh, tonight is episode 13, uh, 18, actually, uh, the Revolution Report. And with us is a very special guest, uh, someone I've been following for a few years now. And I'm super excited to have him on to promote his uh, amazing company called DonorSea. DonorSea is a humanitarian crowdfunding platform that allows donors to quickly and easily help people in the world's poorest countries. The platform lets donors see how their money makes an impact through raw video updates. This platform was created by our guest tonight, Mr. Greg Glyer. Greg, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> that description I just read was off of Wikipedia, but I can confirm it's, it's, it's accurate. And uh, before I turn it over to you, Greg, I just, let me just say, uh, how wonderful I think what you've created here is. Um, this is a libertarian show and, you know, we love to talk about you know, the evils of the state and how we'd be better off under a voluntary society. And I don't want to get wrapped up in ideology here, but uh, I think something like this, um, if anything, proves that given the chance and a good platform, people want to help and will help. And with what you've created, it just makes it super easy, user friendly and super transparent. So um, why don't we start with um, you just giving your um, pitch for Donor C and maybe let's start with like how, how you got started, um, your story. Is this the first time you've ever done something like this? What made you take that leap in creating something like Donor C? Yeah, well, thank you very much, uh, guys, for having me on. It's really great to be here. And um, I know that you've been using DonorSea for a while. Eric, I've seen your name pop up on the DonorSea app every now and now and then. So um, just really appreciate uh, you guys having me and helping me get the word out with DonorSea. So, um, yeah, I, let's see. So DonorSea is almost four years old this September, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, okay, Sorry, I, didn't, I heard you guys probably four years ago on Wines of Liberty, and that's when I first discovered Oh, is that it. the first time? Yeah, they've yeah. been yeah. Ex extremely supportive. And, and right now, uh, I was just on, on their show just recently, and um, – I think we're basically at least for the for during the coronavirus outbreak stuff. I'm going to be on their show about once a month just to kind of catch everyone up oh, nice. on what's going on. So, um, yeah, they're great. So, yeah, I guess uh, where do I start? DonorSea is a platform for donors to see where their money goes when they donate through video updates. Um, we work almost exclusively with people living in extreme poverty. So, when when you think of someone who's living in extreme poverty, it's some, some sometimes hard to conceptualize because their lives are so different from most of us. But um, often they live on about thirty or forty cents a day. They often have kids and they're feeding their kids with that small amount of money. Um, and when something happens in their life, it happens um, some, when something small happens, when they have like a $20 expense to go to the hospital, that's actually a really big deal for them because of how little they make. Um, and, you know, it seems like these people are kind of rare, but half the planet lives on less than $3 a day. So there's a lot of people, there's three and a half billion people on the planet who are um, living in these conditions and uh, donor C serves primarily, serves primarily, people in that kind of class of people. Right. Um, and what we do is we provide video updates. So let's say there's a, a young girl who um, is hard of hearing and she wants to go back to school. Well, through DonorSea, you could donate hearing aids to her. And then as the donor, you'll get a video update of her hearing for the first time. We do this with all sorts of stuff, not just hearing aids, but you can help people see again. You can get them glasses or provide them with surgeries that they need um, or just any of these like one-time thing things where it's a small thing, often a small thing for you, but it makes a big impact in their life. Um, so yeah, this started back in, I, I think we launched it in 
we, we did launch it in 2016. Um, but the three years prior to that, I was living in Malawi, Africa. And when I moved to Malawi uh, in 2013, it was ranked as the poorest country on the planet. And um, that's kind of what started inspiring me to get involved in this type of work. Um, so I started doing small crowdfunding campaigns while I was living overseas. And then I decided to start DonorC and we launched it um, in 2016 and it's been great. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, those, um, the video updates really makes, I get, I pulled up my DonorC app right now and it just, it shows me all the projects that I donated to. And um, I wanted to talk about um, some of the different kinds of projects because you have everything from um, like right here with um, Samuel, it was $45, which paid for his entire years of tuition. And that obviously got funded right away. And I got a little picture here from Samuel with my name on it. It's just, it's truly amazing. And then you got something else like this other one, which was a road that needed to be built that was like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. So there's a wide range of things you could donate to and just um like i saw one the other day where um these these girls needed just regular towels to clean themselves after you know in their facilities which they didn't have something so simple that could just improve the quality of life of these people who are living in these conditions it's just it's truly amazing so maybe talk about something some of the different types of projects that you guys work on yeah well it's it's so great to hear about some of the experiences that you've had on the platform. Um, we've just tried to make the platform better every year. We try and make it more transparent. We try and make it easier to use. Um, we've really invested a lot in the website. So um, just making the website like really user friendly, really easy to get hop on board and, and make donations and, and kind of see where everything goes. So I think um, it's just great to hear some of that feedback uh, yeah. from you, Eric, especially from someone who's been I, using it for so long. Like I know that road project was probably, I think that was something that was initiated by uh, Mark from Lions of Liberty. So, oh, really? Yeah, I wow. think you kind of like got the word out about it. And then that's um, that's how that one ended up getting funded. I, if I remember correctly, I mean, it was a while ago, but. Yeah, it was um, a couple of years ago, I think, but it still yeah. has it on here. It says 100% raise, so. Yeah. Great. So and we we so most of our projects what we do we focus on what we call low cost high impact projects. So yeah. things that are small amounts of money relatively speaking but make a big impact in someone's life. Um, often it's something that will um, either save their life or transform their quality of life in a really substantial way. So some of the stuff you mentioned are like school fees. Um, there are children who can't afford forty. I mean they're, they're they come from families where they can't afford forty five dollars to you know, get a school uniform and go to their local government public school. And that's like, it's a small amount of money, but for them, they can't afford it. And so um, it, for them, it would either be, they don't get the money and they are like working in the, on the farm, um, right. they're helping their family, or they do get the money and they get to go to school and they get the chance for a better future. Um, or it's things like, uh, there are people, I mean, it's horrible to think about it. There are people who um, are, are, uh, paraplegics they they can't they 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 can't move from the waist down and they literally have to like drag themselves on the ground to get anywhere and so we you can provide them with a wheelchair for a few hundred dollars and that's the type yeah. of thing where they couldn't oh, afford yeah. that truly um and so we have these these videos where you see people and um it's just it's tough to watch but it's like this is how they get around they drag themselves and they go and they they uh, see their neighbor and they get they, they might go get some breakfast this way and then one day through donor and through our our partners and through our donors, um, someone provides them with a wheelchair and it completely transforms their life in a really substantial way. I think another one, I think one more project type of project I'll share is um, we, we do a lot of work with malnourished babies. So mm -hmm. um, there are babies who uh, are unable, you know, sometimes the, the mom doesn't make it through childbirth or sometimes um, there are just complications where the baby is unable to breastfeed. And so the baby gets really malnourished during these times. So a lot of times the mom is malnourished herself and that's why she can't produce the milk to, to provide for the baby. So just really tough situations like that. So um, what we do is we provide formula milk for these babies that are literally starving. Like you can see their ribs, they're completely yeah. emaciated. Um, and then you can donate formula milk to these babies. And about six months later, you'll get to see a nice, healthy baby um, that because of the donation that you made that and it wouldn't have happened without. I mean, it's truly like this stuff is like actually life and death. Like these yeah. babies in a lot of cases, there's a baby. There are babies who are alive today, many of them 
um, because donors came through the platform and decided to help them. So um, we really focus on these low cost, high impact. And high impact is like not big enough of a word. It's like yeah. a massive transformation in these people's Absolutely. lives. Yeah. And, and the way you guys make it so like with the app, it's just you download the app and you just see a list of projects and it's just literally a, a click of the button and you can change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about like um, like the aid workers, how exactly it works? Because like you, you guys basically connect with aid workers on the ground and mm -hmm. the money, pretty much all of it goes to whatever you're donating to. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so what we do is we have a bunch of um, – there are several aid workers uh, kind of scattered throughout the globe that we partner with. And they're usually people who they've been living in their local community for anywhere from like five to 20 or 30 years. Like they've been living there for a long time. They really understand the local situation. Um, like for example, I lived in Malawi for three years. And when I lived there, when I first got to Malawi in that first year, there wasn't, I wasn't able to do much to help the local people there because I didn't know the language. I didn't know the culture. There's a bunch of norms that I just didn't get. Um, and so what we try and work, what we try and do is we find people who really understand the local culture, the local language, the, just, they understand that specific location and we partner with them and then they provide the projects that are, that create opportunities for donors to donate to. And it's really important that they understand the, the local location because um, one, there's a lot of opportunity for like fraud and corruption and we want to avoid that. Um, and then two, in order to help people well, you have to like really understand their given situation and you have to understand what are the, the potential pitfalls and what are the opportunities for impact. And so um, by, by working with local people who are on the ground, um, we're able to, to identify those things and provide them as opportunities for donors to donate to. Yeah, that's great. Um, Mitch, did you have a uh, question? Yeah, I was just, um, you know, I'll admittedly, I'm kind of the the green guy here, so I'm not as familiar with uh, donor C as, as as Eric is here. But um, you know, one thing that I was wondering, kind of coming into this, was you know, how exactly does the free market um, help you guys out with what you do over there? Well, in lots of ways, um, I think one of the biggest things we have 15 categories, like Eric, you asked earlier about like, what are some of the types of projects? So we have 15 categories. So if you go to donorc.com, you'll see 15 categories and it's things like you can, if you want to help infants, you can help in infants. If you want to help uh, with education, you can help with education, but we also have an entrepreneurship category and that's a way for people who want to help people start businesses. Um, so sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to give to a baby who's malnourished and that's just like the thing that you want to do. And, and that's, there's opportunity needs to do that um, on donor C. But sometimes, you know, it's like, well, okay, I want to help the baby, but I also want the baby to have the opportunity to grow up and go to school and have a college education. Some, like, how does all that happen? Well, you can provide the mom with a business for her to start. Um, and so that's one of the things, another thing that we do on donor C is we, we really try and empower people to um, create an income stream for themselves. And for them, it's it would be a small, I mean, relative to us, it would be a small income income stream um, but it actually makes a massive difference in their life um, and the other thing is we really focus on just voluntary donations like we don't take money from the government and funnel it to anyone what we do is we just say um, like I'm a big believer personally in um, the best type of charity is is the one where someone is giving of their own resources um, and and they care about what the outcome of that donation is so when you get and I'm, you know there's nothing against like if there are people who are who have their lives safe through foreign aid, you know, nothing against that. I don't want to get into any of that, but um, just a lot of times when money is filtered kind of through the, um, where the person giving the money has no stake in what the outcome of the money is. Um, okay. A lot of times the funds are not used as efficiently as they could be. Whereas on donor C, everything that's given is, is funneled through people who are being generous out of the kindness of their hearts, but they also care that their money is being used well. Um, and so that is why you just see these, lives transforms transform for very small amounts of money on our platform and um yeah and so we're we're big fans of the free market yeah there's no there's no funds uh passing through any bureaucrats hands <laughs> that's i mean that's right yeah it's, <laughs> yeah. it's all uh, it's kind of like a peer-to-peer -peer system yeah, it's always that's always the concern is that the money um ends up in the wrong hands unfortunately um especially in some of these cu countries where the governments are just so they're very corrupt. Yeah, corrupt. Often, yeah. You um, know, and we, this is something that we talk about a lot because 
it's these are challenging places you know it doesn't there's no way around it it's it's tough to live or it's tough to do work well in a country where the government is openly stealing from the public funds and everyone know you know th there are th there are those types of situations um and so what we always say is you know we're we are not perfect. We do the best that we can in some very messy situations. And we're always just like, if we make a mistake, we'll tell you about it. But um, we always tell people, you know, give anytime you give, anytime there's any type of charity, there's always some amount of trust involved. It's impossible to give and like guarantee that your money is going to 100% be used exactly as you specify it, especially in, in like a developing country. Um, but what we do is we just say, look, we're going to be as transparent as possible. Um, we're going to try and develop relationships with our donors and you're going to be able to see exactly what happens. Um, and if things don't go well, and sometimes that happens, we'll just tell you about it. Like you won't have to wonder your money's not in a black box somewhere right. with, with you not knowing what happened. You always get to find out. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between um, someone like you guys who's so like openly transparent and you know where your money's going compared to, you know, some of these really, really large, um, charities, you know, the Red Cross is a big one that comes to mind and, you know, all the stuff that they have to, all the overhead that they have and you, you just give your money to them and you have no idea where it's going and that's it. You get no feedback whatsoever. And just talk about some of the differences between you guys and the big, and the big charities. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of charities who have, um, there are a lot of charities who are doing some good work for sure. Um, but it's just hard for people to know how much of their work is good. You like, if you give money to any organization and you don't really get feedback on it, it's hard to, it's hard to quantify for yourself, whether or not your money is making an impact. Um, and a, a lot of the charities that are the largest, so, you know, you can find the, the list of the top five, the Red Cross would be in their units. So, um, wh wh whatever they are, a lot of times, um, the reason that they're so big is because they're so old. Like they're, they have this brand, this incredible brand name recognition that's right. just carried them for a really long, uh, a, a really long time. Um, but you have to wonder like how long is their model going to survive if, um, if they're unable to kind of compete with some of these new forms of charity that are cropping up, like, like donor and there's other people who are creating interesting charitable initiatives as well. And so, um, yeah, I think it, we could, it could be a very disruptive time over the next 10 years. Um, and I hope it's disruptive in a good way, right? I don't want anyone to, I, I just want people, I just want everyone to be better. I want donor to be better. I want everyone to, to, um, the, what we are, our primary pillar at donor the thing that we talk about more than anything else is we say, we need to prioritize the poor. It doesn't matter if donor does well. It doesn't matter if the red cross does well. What we care about is that people living in poverty do well, and we want to be the advocates for them. Um, and that means even at our own expense, like we, whatever is in their best interest is what we care about the most. Absolutely. Mitch, you look like you were going to say something. You got, um, did you have a, a Bitcoin question? I think you mentioned, um, um donations. I, 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 I was curious about um, what what your opinions were on cryptocurrency and blockchain, if that has done anything to help you guys at, at all, um, just because there seems to be a lot emerging in that industry right now. Yeah, we've looked uh, pretty closely at opportunities to um, incorporate cryptocurrency into making donations. Um, one of the, the benefits that, that people often mention is that with cryptocurrency, you have the ledger, so you get to kind of see how funds are, are funneled. Um, and while that would be a really nice feature, you know, we work with in places where people like, you know, amazingly about 42% of the world still doesn't have internet. So they don't have a, a you know, you can't send a Bitcoin to people who don't have a computer or a cell phone or whatever. Um, so it's, it's not, it's not quite, you know, un until kind of everyone on the planet has, has the capacity to have a, a Bitcoin wallet and so forth. Um, it's not quite to the level where, where we're, where we can kind of trace the dollars all the way through. Um, but we have looked at it just because it's a, there's a lot of people who, who ha are holding a lot of Bitcoin. They want to use it. Um, and they, there's just not that many places where you can use it yet. And so offering a place where you could donate Bitcoin through donors, it's something we've looked at, but haven't um, seriously incorporated just because we have like a, a list of a million things that we want to do. And that's like within that list somewhere. So I think it's one, one of those things we'll get to eventually, but just haven't had the opportunity to incorporate it yet. Yeah, of course you're going to get a Bitcoin question on a libertarian podcast. <laughs> right, yeah. No, <laughs> bring it on. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this, this, this idea out there whoop, that, um, you know, libertarians are cold-hearted, don't care about the poor. 
Um, and that, that's just simply not true. It's just we recognize the um, pitfalls of the state and how, you know, they could, you know, the system that they have set up, they actually keeps people in perpetual poverty and dependency and that we advocate for things like this. I mean, this is at a much larger scale, helping like the poorest people in the world. But I mean, I can see something like this set up here just to help, you know, the poor people in this country, something similar and it'd be a completely uh, transparent and voluntary system. And I, I think something like this could work on a, you know, a more local scale. Yeah, that's not been, that's something that, that is something that gets brought up a lot. You know, the, this idea that libertarians are cold hearted or they don't care about poor people. Um, it is something that gets brought up a lot, but it, I mean, it's been like the opposite of my experience. In some ways, right. it's like libertarians have been the most eager to yeah. embrace what yeah, we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's funny that there's this reputation floating out there because actually, um, I've, I've just felt like, wow, these people are so generous and they're actually really kind and thoughtful people. And I think that's what it is. It's like, um, because it's so thoughtful, it's like they want to f donate their money in the best place possible. And so they look for like the high impact opportunities and they're like a little bit more critical than other people might be. And so I think that's why they've, they've kind of found their way to donorcy. And I just really grateful for it. Yeah. I mean, anyone who's on team poor people, you know, that's yeah. Like, I mean, it's like, there's just this, this mindset, I think, especially in this country where people who, you know, well, you know, we get taxed and that helps, that, that helps poor people. So I'm, I'm doing my part and it's like, yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, how much, how much of that do you know is actually going to the people you want to help with, with again, something with your, like, like you're doing, it's just, you know, you know, and like the, the, the video updates and those things, that's just, that's just the icing on the cake. That just makes it so awesome. And, and it makes you feel good too. Cause you know, you get that message and you're like, wow, you know, I helped this person. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled to be able to um, work on donorcy and uh, we're at, in a crazy time right now because of the coronavirus pandemic. So um, it's been like a, it's been an, it's been fun to, it's been fun or fun's the wrong word, but it's been just like thrilling to be able to be part of this thing. And um, yeah, I think the next few months are going to be especially crazy with everything going on worldwide. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Um, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, how the coronavirus is going to affect the areas in which you guys operate in, you know, are there extra things that you guys are taking into consideration now and doing. Yeah, we're really focusing on, uh, well, so we have a feed sub, donorc.com slash coronavirus. Um, and that feed is a, just a, a feed dedicated specifically to projects uh, projects that are helping the poorest people on the planet deal with COVID-19. Um, and a lot of times it's things, it's basic things like hand sanitizer, soap. Um, it's just protective equipment, things like that. So, um, yeah, we're... I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I don't like to be alarmist. I really, I'm like the, I'm the, when, when a Ebola broke out, I thought it was ridiculous how there was this mass panic in the States and people were afraid to ride the subways in New York city. Even when COVID-19 started to, to, to grow and even coming to the States, I still thought like, what's all this panic about? Um, I am beginning to get pretty concerned about how it will affect people in developing nations and it for multiple reasons, not just, not just from the virus, right? The virus will probably take out a, um, a decent portion of the elderly and just elderly population. Uh, these, these, these countries, they also deal with um, quite a bit of malnourishment. And so anyone who's immunocompromised is also going to be in a tough yeah. spot. And there's a lot of people who are in that, position. And then like beyond that, um, these economies are incredibly fragile. So like this, the U S can just turn itself off for two months and look like it'll be rough and it will feel like people lose their jobs, but like somehow we're going to bounce back. Like we all know, like, okay, we're going to bounce back. It'll be kind of like, it'll be tough. It'll be very, very difficult for a while, but like probably things will be okay for everyone in the U S um, just, um, economics wise. Yeah. 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 But the, when you when your GDP is, I think like the the GDP in America is like fifty two thousand dollars per capita. So for every person, it's about fifty two thousand dollars. In a place like Malawi, it's about like two hundred and fifty dollars. It's like it's wow. a tiny tiny fraction. Yeah. Um. So, 
when you have you can't just shut a country off for like these people are subsistence farmers meaning that they they make barely enough food or income just to feed themselves and feed their families so you can't just turn things off for a while um so a lot of these people are in, in places where they're having to where they're gonna have to decide like i okay one do i obey the government or do i do i you know work on my farm or one do i um I mean, it's just, it's, it's a bunch of catch 22s for the, yeah. for, in this situation. So and like here, like, it's still like, you know, I've been out of work. This is week three for me. And you know, it's the, the worst, the worst I have it is, um, you know, getting a little stir crazy sitting in the house all day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I can still go, I can still that. go, I can still go down to the market and, you know, I see, um, empty toilet paper shelves. And the first time I went there, you know, there was no pasta, but you know, I've been there four or five times since, and you know, the, everything's being replenished. It's all there and because we got these supply chains due to, you know, the, the free market system that we have. But these countries, they don't have that kind of organization there. Like, no. how, how are they going to deal with the, with all that? I don't know, but I hope that, you know, I, my hope is that the U.S. recovers in time for them to for us to be in a place where we can start to do things for for places around the world, because I'm actually pretty concerned. Yeah. Um, you know, I lived in Malawi for three years. I have a lot of friends there. We have a lot of our partners are based out of Tanzania and um, a lot. So some, some people have been evacuated, some have left, but there are these people who are staying behind and they're like living in these communities and they're just bracing right now because they don't know what it's going to be like. So um, I, all I care about is I just want to, I want to send a message to them that donors here like has your back. We, we want to support you and support the work that you're doing on the ground out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be the, the the worst thing I can imagine is that the U.S. kind of COVID nineteen kind of is no longer a problem for us, and while it's still like out in the rest of the world, U.S. you know us in the states we just kind of forget about it. That happens pretty often with um, with a lot of these things. So um, my my yeah. my hope is that people um, because they kind of suffer through a bit of COVID-19 themselves um, that they're really sympathetic to, to how it affects people around the globe, because it's always the poorest people on the planet who get hard, hit the hardest by this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, so Mitch, if you got anything else. Um, um, gonna... No, that's, that's all I had. I... Well, I guess the most important question would be um, where can people find you? What's the easiest way to donate through the website or the app? What do you, yeah, we usually tell people the website these days. We're just making updates to the website, like literally every day, and we do update the app and we keep it fun like keep it running and all that stuff. But the website is just like literally all the time. We're like making updates. It's really like constantly fresh. So um, just go to donorsc.com, donate anything, donate some, pick out a project, make a donation, and you'll get your video update. Usually, it's within like one to three days of the project being funded. Um, they're usually pretty quick, and they get quicker all the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's an amazing thing to experience, and uh, check it out. And then if you want to help out with specifically COVID-19, um, I've been telling people to bookmark donorc.com slash coronavirus. Okay. Um, there's going to be opportunities that the there. Show notes. That'd be perfect. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, because um, we're we're – there's a lot of people who are very concerned and um, you know, there's just uh, well, we, we would just appreciate that. So yeah, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I've, you know, once this video is ready, I will, I will share it on all the platforms I, I'm on. I'll share it on all the, the Hornberg, Hornberger pages and everything. And uh, cause I just, like I said at the beginning, I just think what you have created here is just absolutely wonderful. And I hope we can get as many people on board as we can. Um, so, with that said, thank you very much, Gret, for coming on, for sharing your story with our listeners. And uh, I would love to have you back on in a month or so to, so you can give us an update. Sounds good. I'd be happy to do it. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Mitch. All right. Uh, hang on for one minute. All right. See you guys later.